Hey yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel and to more pro wrestling coverage. As always, keeping you up to date and on this video, we're gonna round up everything that went down at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view in which we saw Shayna Baszler dominate in the main event. Punching her ticket straight to WrestleMania, she's gonna go ahead and face Becky Lynch for the championship. But there is some more news regarding WrestleMania coming out of this pay-per-view, which ultimately was a lackluster one with some good highlights when it comes to wrestling as some of the in-ring competition was actually good before we get into it though if you've been enjoying the coverage make sure to elbow drop a like and hit those notifications to always be updated on all the latest because we got a lot to cover as we head into wrestlemania anyways uh, let's jump into it and let's go ahead and start off uh, with the main event of the night literally the most predictable match and there was a lot of bad in it but there is one good thing that i like about how WWE booked this whole thing and that is a Shayna Baszler dominating everyone clean sweeping everything and of course getting the biggest momentum into her Wrestlemania match against Becky Lynch the match started off with Ruby Riot and Natalia which led to Sarah Logan coming out followed by Shayna Baszler who then quickly dominated the three women in the match submitting Shayna Baszler Ruby Riot and Natalia in very short minutes and then this is where things get kind of awkward wwe decided to have Shayna baszler just wait for three to four minutes before the next opponent came out that next opponent was lit morgan in which as soon as she came out she tried to get some offense on Shayna baszler but you know it didn't last long in the end Shayna baszler once again eliminated her by putting her to sleep right by the corner that asuka was on because of course asuka was the last opponent to enter this match and then once again wwe decided to make Shayna baszler wait which felt like it was uh, longer than the actual five minutes and i do like the fact that Shayna baszler and asuka were hyping up this upcoming confrontation that they were gonna have in the chamber but them doing that and looking at each other for so long just squashed the momentum that uh, Shayna baszler were having while defeating everyone i feel like the dominance could have been seen a bit more from her if she just told the referee to bring the next opponent an end because she's not waiting you know just keep the action going instead of stopping it then having Shayna Baszler go at it again then stopping it then having her go at it again regardless though they did book this match correctly when it comes to Shayna Baszler dominating because that is exactly what she needed it looks like in the end Vince McMahon found a way to make Shayna Baszler feel like she is headed into Wrestlemania of course there were reports early on in the week indicating that Vince wasn't too happy of how Shayna Baszler matched went against Carrie Sane on Monday he felt like it wasn't big enough so he wasn't impressed it looks like after tonight he is probably impressed and they did a good job on booking her to look like the biggest monster that Becky Lynch is about to face in her championship run a big side note about this whole match is the fact that Asuka is amazing inside the chamber pot. She was saying things I didn't understand, but it was awesome. And she was making amazing face expression. Where now you can see that she's really enjoying what she's doing instead of what was like a year ago or so. Anyways, for this main event match, Shayna Baszler made Asuka pass out to win the match. Which besides Shayna walking through everyone, when you really look at it, it wasn't even that good of an elimination chamber match. But that was the main event, rewinding it back all the way to the beginning of the show. In the kickoff show, for whatever reason, we had the Viking Raiders versus Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. Of course, the Viking Raiders pick up the victory, hitting the Viking experience on Zack Ryder. Then to start off the main card, we had Daniel Bryan versus Drew Gulak. I feel like this was one of the best matches of the night when it comes to wrestling and telling a story in the ring. Drew Gulak's heavy focus on Daniel Bryan's neck to try to defeat him was insane to the point where it made me look away on a lot of the German suplexes and spots that he was doing just to try to hurt Daniel Bryan's neck. Some of the replays that they were showing were hard to watch and I don't understand how is it that Daniel Bryan goes through them when we know about his history. So because we know about his history though, it does make it more painful to watch and it gets us into the match more. Daniel Bryan did pick up the victory against Drew Gulak but it's 
obvious that Drew Gulak earned his respect. It was a good match, and if you've seen Drew Gulak compete before, outside of the crappy SmackDown matches that he ended up having, then you know how great of a competitor he is. Then we got the United States Championship match. I mean, come on, it's Andrade. Of course he defeated Humberto Carrillo, and of course Humberto Carrillo lost another rematch. Can't wait for WWE to book another one to make it the 101 rematch opportunity for Humberto Carrillo that he is about to lose again. How many times can we see the same result? Can we see Humberto Carrillo lose this match and this championship opportunity? And how many times is WWE going to continue to book it? Elimination Chamber matchup for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. The Miss and John Morrison defeated the New Day, the Uso Heavy Machinery, Lucha House Party, Dove Sigler, and Robert Roode. But let's talk about some of the highlights. To start off, Lucha House Party came in here and they showed up. Linsa Dorado hit a shooting star press from the top of the elimination chamber. What a savage. Unfortunately though, Lucha House Party was also the first team to get eliminated. Another big highlight that went down on all of this was Otis going through one of the pots and actually landing on the outside. That was a crazy spot for Otis and it put a big spotlight on him in this match. Unfortunately, because of all of this, Tucker ended up eating a pinfall by the glorious DDT from Robert Roode. Then right away, we got the New Day hitting their finishers on Dove Ziggler and Robert Roode, pinning both of them, setting up the Usos to hit splashes from the top pots to eliminate them. So then the last two teams in the match was John Morrison and The Miss versus The Usos. In the end, Miss and Morrison won the match by hitting their finisher on The Usos. This right here was a good chamber match. It had a lot of spots, a lot of action, just as expected, and WWE led their team actually go out there and do some tag team work which as you guys know it turns into great wrestling i just wish they did that every single week no disqualification match alistair black defeated aj styles with the help of the undertaker that is certainly very weird to say but it did happen we have alistair black beating up by the oc which prompted The Undertaker to teleport to the ring. Just like the good old day, you know The Undertaker was under the ring. As soon as the lights went out, he came out, was about to take out Luke Gallows and Karen Anderson, about to hit the choke slam on them, but didn't happen. Instead, he did it to AJ Styles. Lights goes out again, The Undertaker disappear. Alistair Black out of nowhere hits the black mask as soon as the lights goes on, and AJ Styles takes a big L. So you know they're heading into WrestleMania, and we're going to be getting that AJ Styles version versus The Undertaker match. Not gonna lie though, I'm very curious to see what Aleister Black is gonna be doing at WrestleMania. Up next, we got the World Tag Team Championship match. The Street Profits defeating Seth Rollins and Murphy. Good back and forth between these two guys. We had the Viking Raiders coming out and actually brawling it out with AOP, sending them to the backstage. So that wasn't an issue. Then towards the middle of the match, we get Kevin Owens coming through the crowd, eating some popcorn, providing a good distraction, leading to to the Street Profits uh, picking up the victory and then in the end Seth Rollins ended up beating a stunner which he sold amazingly by the way. Kevin Owens continued to eat popcorn and even throwing some at Murphy's face. So that is that. We got the handicap match for the Intercontinental Championship match. Sami Zayn, Cesaro, and Shinsuke Nakamura defeated Braun Strowman. But Sami Zayn was the one to pin Braun Strowman, so he won his first WWE Championship on the quote-unquote main roster, which of course is long overdue. So big congrats on Sami Zayn for picking up the victory. This match went as expected. There was some good stuff in it though. I like how there was a heavy focus on Braun Strowman trying to get his hand more specifically on Sami Zayn because he has been the most annoying one throughout this whole storyline. So that was good. Really wondering what they're gonna do at WrestleMania with the Intercontinental Championship. Considering that the trio of Sami Zayn, Cesaro, and Nakamura are still together, I can see a 3 versus 3 where Braun Strowman gets two of the teammates to face them in a 3 on 3 at WrestleMania, which means the title won't even be on the line. But does open up the possibility for us to get instead a United States Championship multi-man possible ladder match on the Monday Night Raw side of things. And then for the main event which we already discussed as Shayna Baszler picked up the victory. She's gonna go on to Wrestlemania and face a Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's Championship in one of the big matches of the event. So that is what went 
down at this year's WWE Elimination Chamber. Let me know your thoughts on it down in the comments below. And in general, as I said before, certainly not the best pay-per-view that WWE has given us. It was extremely predictable with just uh, some highlights within matches. And even with The Undertaker appearing in it, it really felt like it was just an okay Monday Night Raw episode. Talking about Monday Night Raw, that's coming up and WWE ended up confirming one big thing that's going to be happening. And that is Edge making his role return following Randy Orton's attack. So expect that the Rated R superstar to maybe finally get some revenge on Randy Orton and challenge him to that WrestleMania match that we know it's going to be happening. Anyways, guys, I thank you for watching. I will catch you on the next Pro Wrestling News Roundup. So hit those notifications to not miss it. Join up as we on the road to 200,000 subscribers. I'll see you on the next one. So stay savage.